Let me uh, teach you about some chaos there. <laughs> Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of The One Sheet. I am Stuart Schuster, this is Ben Burns, and this is the show where we take our two interests, movies and design, and we bring them together and we uh, talk about movie posters. This episode is gonna be about a movie that a lot of people love, I love it. I love it too, it's so good. <laughs> good, good, okay. Cause like, seriously for a second there when I looked at you, I was like, I don't even know if he likes this movie. I could, I could be wrong, I don't know. Okay, so anyway, the movie is Jurassic Park, 1993. Jurassic Park was directed by Steven Spielberg and it stars Sam Neill, Laura Dern, Jeff Goldblum in one of his best roles. Wait, 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 before we do another one, can't I just, uh... <laughs> Richard Attenborough, Joseph Mazzello, Ariana Richards, Samuel L. Jackson. Hold on to your butts. And Wayne Knight. You might be asking, who's Wayne Knight? Let me remind you. Hello, Newman. <laughs> Hello, Jerry. <laughs> uh, okay, this poster has a little bit of a weird story because I, I really did like a lot of research on this and I could not find a, uh, a, a designer for the poster. It was an executive decision by Steven Spielberg that landed the logo on the film poster as the primary way of advertising not just the film, but the inevitable merchandise that would follow. Jurassic Park is the story of a group of scientists who are invited to a mysterious island by a billionaire, probably Jeff Bezos, only to find out that the, that that billionaire has been using his money to resurrect dinosaurs by harvesting their DNA from fossils. So, Ben Burns, this is Jurassic Park. I would love to hear your thoughts. <laughs> I love this poster. I, I honestly don't see anything wrong with this poster. I mean, it, compositionally, it is so simple that when this was in theaters, Next to all the other early 90s flicks, I think that this probably popped off of that wall just due to its sheer simplicity. Now, compositionally, what I think is, is genius is the, the use of symmetry. A lot of designers and a lot of visual creators use symmetry to communicate conflict. So you'll notice like the scene where Darth Vader is walking up the stairwell in Star Wars is perfectly symmetrical. And the reason why it causes conflict is because you're not really sure where your eyes should line up because mm. everything's per so perfectly in the center. And so I like it because it calls direct, you know, the hierarchy is so super clear on this. You want to look at that logo all day long and everything else is secondary. So. I, I'm just in love with this. I love this poster too, and one of the, 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 I think that the main reason that I love it is because of its simplicity. Mm -hmm. The fact that there's, there's actually a number of alternate posters that you can, if you look up online, you can see these. They're very standard, like the faces of all the main characters, mm -hmm. or the big, the big gates at the opening, you know, welcome to Jurassic Park or whatever. Right. But what I love that they did about this was they took the simplicity of the logo, which obviously if you've seen the movie is stamped on everything right. in Jurassic Park. Lunch boxes, t-shirts, the Jeeps that they drive around in, it's on banners hanging outside of the thing, it's everywhere. The way that people advertise the park in the movie is the way that the movie is advertised. Mm. And I think that's sort of like a flash of genius in a way. I don't know that that's ever been done before. No, and actually, this was actually the first time that they've used this concept of meta branding, where uh, the park in the film, this was the park's logo. And so a lot of times, a lot of these films, you'll see that the film has a logo, but it's not represented in the content in the storyline of the film. And so this revolutionized that meta branding kind of concept, and it was a genius play when it came to merch. Yeah. So Steven, you did good, man. You did good. But here's the kicker. Hmm. I want to also talk about the poster that they did for the 20th anniversary re-release because they went a completely different way with that. 
Okay, so here we have the complete opposite way of going about that. You still have the logo, mm -hmm. but you have the gates, which we were talking about before. You have the Jeep, mm -hmm. you have you know the jungle outside, and then the background, the light coming through the gates. And this is very reminiscent of some of the alternate posters from the early 90s that they ended up not using for right. the original release. And in a way, like I personally feel like this is a much less effective poster or would have been a less effective poster for the movie at that time than just the logo. Right. Well, and there's some there's an obvious difference here. If we put this side by side, the original poster is obviously very symmetrical, but what I like about it is you got this really strong red on black. And that sets the tone for the movie, right? You have this kind of deep crimson that represents all this kind of anger and blood and it's juxtaposed on just a sheet of darkness, just a, just a canvas of black. And you see this- A canvas of unknown, if you will. Exactly, right? So if you see this poster, the guys are driving into the park and the park is like a beacon of light. And so it just causes like a weird, like, what is this? Like, what, what does that mean? Are, are we driving into the future? Are we walking into the light here? Yeah, it's sort of like a dissonance like, yeah, kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. Not to mention the really corny 3D extruded type at the top. And I mean, come on. Like, <laughs> really? Come on. <laughs> One thing I found out about in my research, uh, which I found really interesting, I'm just going to throw this in here. When they were designing the logo for it, they actually uh, made the palm trees at the bottom very small to emphasize the size of the T-Rex. Mm -hmm. Gives it a little context, yeah. right? That, that's, that, that's that hierarchy that we keep talking about. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's fascinating, if we go back to the old one, Jurassic Park, the original, revolutionized the use of CG in a, in a feature film. And you don't see that on the poster. They've chosen to stay simple. And I think that that restraint it, it just speaks volumes. So it's very super impressive that they're not going to lean into the special effects, even though they're amazing. They're going to stick to what matters, and that's the story, the story of the park, the story of the brand, yeah, and the merch. <laughs> and the merch. Yeah, it, 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 they, they, have, they have created something that it has become iconic. Mm -hmm. Jurassic Park on black, that's mm -hmm. it. You know, that's all you need. Yep. I mean, I feel, honestly, like, I feel like this is one of those things where it's like, there's, there's like that one dude in the conference room who's like, put it on black. We're done. <laughs> Have a nice weekend, everybody. <laughs> Either that or they walk in and, and all it is is, a, is a, the logo on a dark slide. And they're like, oh, I like that. And the designer's sitting there like, Oh, I haven't even started the presentation, but cool. Yeah, this is it. <laughs> yeah, this is the one. Yeah. I totally thought that. I had that idea. So that is all about this poster and the movie Jurassic Park. Now it's time for Did You Know? Stuart? All right, here's a couple of facts about Jurassic Park that you may not have known. The t <laughs> this is the best one. The T-Rex uh, would occasionally malfunction during the rain, causing it to turn on by itself and scare the people around it. <laughs> that one that one was good. That one actually made me laugh out loud when I was when I was looking at it. it was... Oh my god. Another little fact about the T-Rex, the T-Rex's scream is actually a combination of dog, penguin, tiger, alligator, and elephant sounds. Whoa. The glass of water that signifies the arrival of the T-Rex by its rippling actually had a guitar string under the glass and when plucked would make the water ripple. Director Steven Spielberg started on Schindler's List right after principal photography on Jurassic Park finished, which meant that he was pulling double duty editing Jurassic Park while shooting Schindler's List. After he finished Schindler's List and Jurassic Park, he took a four year break, which was unprecedented for him. Here's one of my favorites, a little interesting tidbit. Sean Connery was actually originally offered the role of John Hammond, and Jim Carrey was originally offered the role of Ian Malcolm. Can you imagine no. Jim Carrey no. as, as Ian Malcolm? No. No. <laughs> no. No. Love you, Jim, but no. <laughs> Let me uh, teach you about some chaos theory. <laughs> 
Now it's time for a knowledge check. The words Jurassic Park in the original logo, are they custom or are they an established typeface? Let us know in the comments below. All right, guys, thanks for joining us for one more episode of The One Sheet. This is the show where Stuart and I get to bring our interests and smash them together. Stuart with film, me with design. And if you like this, hit the like button, subscribe, and let us know in the comments section below because we would love for Chris to let us keep this show going. So let us know. We'll see you next time.